and welcome back to another Thunderous Productions tutorial. I'm the madman behind the mic, Jag Thunder, and this is Minecraft. And what's up guys, and welcome back to another tutorial. This one is going to be based off my road designs that I'm using in my Build It Better world. So hopefully you are following that series. If not, you can see a lot of other cool designs that I'm working on for future projects in my modern city. Uh, I just started the Modern City a little bit ago, and I'm using the regular two-lane roads right now. And I have other designs for some bigger and better roads with on-ramps and all kinds of cool shit like that. But we're not going to get into that tutorial, or <laughs> that one for this tutorial. We're just going to go over some of the basic things, crosswalks, uh, the signaling here, road signs, some lamp designs, and, uh, and uh, t -t -t a bus stop. <laughs> Sorry guys, I had to think a little bit. And just go over, like I said, just a few things just to get you started. It's been uh, several requ several requests to uh, to do this. So we're going to get started. I'm going to fly down here to the other end of my modern city, let you kind of take a look at what I've got going on. If you're not following the city builds, be sure to check out Season 2 of Build It Better. And up here, this is where I've got my bus stops. I'm going to show you those here in just a few minutes. And like I said, this should be a pretty quick, painless tutorial. It should be really easy and give you some really good ideas. Now, I'm building mine specifically for a custom world. So I'm building one level up. Uh, so obviously, you guys will build yours down in the ground. So I'm going to build mine on top of the ground just uh, to continue on what I'm doing here. But the basic design is easy. I'm using hardened clay or stained clay. I'm using the dark gray. You can use cobblestone, stone whatever your preference is i'm using yellow stained for the middle and regular white stained for the white stripes and the markings so again like i said you can mix and match your materials for whatever you want to use for your design these roads are based so that the uh, my cars that i have for my tutorials all of my different vehicle tutorials will fit on these these roads just fine the only one that will not fit is the double decker truck uh will not fit under the light <laughs> So don't use that one. <laughs> not in the uh, not in the lower part of my downtown area, anyways. Uh, for my highways and stuff later, that's that's probably where I'll use that. But other than that, all my other vehicles will fit under the lights. Not like they're going to be moving, anyways. But anyhow, so we're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on each side. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's how wide our road is. Really, really simple. White stained clay. White stained clay. We're going to use our yellow in the middle and then again outline it with our gray so that is our main road <laughs> it's really fucking easy um like i said you know, it was, it was going to be fucking easy <laughs> that's it tutorial's over <laughs> but anyways uh as, as far as getting into your crosswalks and um your intersections this is obvious, obviously a three-way intersection now is what i do with uh, with mine is i've got a sidewalk that is one two three four five and again one two three four five going this way i wouldn't recommend going too much smaller than that uh, unless your buildings are really really small or you're not using my vehicles and you want to do a three wide um, uh, road here or a five uh, five what five wide road um, if you're not using my cars then obviously you're going to scale this down a little bit um, if you're going to go bigger than this then uh, your world is going to look weird unless you got some really big fucking cars <laughs> but i wouldn't recommend going any wider than this as far as your yellow markings down the road and your regular paint markings just think of it as a regular road if uh if you wouldn't pass in your vehicle on it don't make them dotted uh, a lot of people make your your roads in your downtown area dotted and uh, i guess it's just a habit that everybody does but correct paint markings you would not pass in the middle of downtown area so i personally feel that it looks better as a solid line any of your open areas as far as your intersections or if there is da, 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 i don't think i did it here because it was so close to the light uh usually i leave this solid i think i did it down here a couple places uh, yeah like right here so if you have like a uh, uh especially the fire department where they come out i left a big opening between the paint uh, if it looks like it's not going to quite fit right, and I think that's why I did it in front of the church, or just plain forgot, uh, go ahead and leave the paint markings off or leave them on, whatever your preference is. Uh, so that's pretty much some of the pointers that I can give on the, the paint markings. Your striping, 
again is one, two, three, four, five. You make it five wide, that way it matches with your sidewalk. It looks more consistent. Again, if you go three wide, you're gonna go three wide. If you go five or seven, seven wide, you go wider with the paint or whatever uh, other openings that you may have. So if you've got a bigger uh, opening coming out of a different building, you want a crosswalk there. Uh, again, that will be your preference how you want to do that. Uh, my bigger roads that I have, there's more lanes of traffic. So on my crosswalks, I actually have the, the other paint markings going this way. And again, with the, the width of this road, the way it works out, as long as you do uh, odd numbers, you'll always be able to start on the first one and on the, fir uh, the first one on this side and go every other paint marking should be a white one and it will always... Uh, always line up you'll never have a double line touching each other so that's that now I put in some water drain systems uh, really really easy underneath the sidewalk I put the glowstone and then put my trap doors on top of it and then filled the bottom in with the light gray wool now you could go down one more and fill in with water and then close it back up that way when you look down in there it has some water my original design had that uh, and it just got to be a pain in the ass when I started getting moving and throwing my roads in stopping to put all the water in and uh, that's why I didn't do it in this world now as far as your lamp post uh, I try to line my lamp posts up uh, one block in and again the reason I put lighting here is so at nighttime this lamp post kind of it looks like it cascades down and the light uh, trickles out it looks a little more natural that way and it also lines up with our uh, signaling here, which is always one in by one in. I never put it on the corner. I think it looks really, really shitty that way. So this looks a lot neater to put it in one by one. And on the opposite side, I put a street lamp just to kind of hold uh, the, the whole theme here, especially on a, th a three-way intersection, a four-way intersection. Obviously, there's going to be another uh, um, signaling, signaling light on this side, uh, a 90-degree turn won't have these so I just usually put the lamp posts on each corner and build the crosswalks accordingly again you can watch the build it better series uh, I think it's probably episode three or two where I'm talking about my roads to get a little more idea and designs on that now as far as the signaling light this is 11 high so I use stone and I go one two three four five six on the sixth block I put a iron bar and a regular hardened green uh, clay and that's where I put my road sign. Obviously, the way you're going, that's where your sign should be on. And then that's where I start the bottom of my light system, which is a cobblestone wall piece here. Two pieces, one out, and then a piece of glowstone. So that is on the sixth block. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then I surround both sides with the trap doors just to kind of give it a, uh, <laughs> a thicker look. <laughs> I know that sounds bad, but whatever. <laughs> eleven. And then I've got one here, and we're going to get a little bit of rain action. Let's get rid of that. I go one diagonal, and then I've got ten across the top. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, on the sixth one, if you follow this design, that will land you right in the middle of this lane. So you have, you know, three on each side, and it looks centered. So that's on the sixth block. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then I go ahead and I cap the end with a uh, trap door and then I cover the top with some carpet pieces if you do not have those you can use slabs just to cover up this piece right here again I put a piece of glowstone in there just to capture a little bit of a light source from the the actually signaling device now again on the signaling device it's just the three solid black pieces of either wool bedrock uh, coal whatever you want to use surrounded by trap doors item frames with your red yellow and green light uh, blocks accordingly if you don't have those you can just use a red yellow and a green uh, block of wool so that is pretty easy for that uh, your lamps uh, two stone on the bottom and it's one two three pieces of your cobblestone wall and then a lamp on top uh, I you could probably go one more if you want to stay even with the other lights uh, but I like mine just one one shorter than those I, I think it looks better but anyways, that is that for the lighting. We'll go over the parking lot lighting here in just a minute. Uh, the bus stop, super, super fucking easy. All we do, using this design with the uh, quartz half slabs or stone half slabs above the road, which I forgot to mention in the beginning, um, a lot of people just have their sidewalks right flat with the road. Reason being is it makes it really easy for your buildings just to run your sidewalks right into your buildings. When you build it this way, you've got to be a little more creative on 
uh, how it goes into your buildings. And I'll, I'll go over here to the fire station and some of the other buildings and we'll take a look at that in just a minute. But I think it gives it uh, more depth and it gives it a lot more character and looks a lot more realistic if you use uh, half slabs for a curb design. Uh, anyways, back to the bus stop. One, two, three, four, five wide by one, two, three. You're going to have three pieces in the middle. So you'll have a horseshoe shape that is three by five by three. You're going to put down three fence posts, three pieces of stairs for a seating material. And then you're going to go one, two, three pieces of pane glass and just connect them all the way around. And then cap it off with your favorite half slab material. Put a bus stop sign on top and bam. <laughs> Super easy. Uh, now I've put some trash cans around my world. Again, just to, to keep it uh, looking a little more realistic. Uh, some place for people to throw the trash. Really simple. Two blocks, four, four buttons around the outside, and a weighted pressure plate on top, or a regular pressure plate, or a carpet piece. Whatever you want to use for that. All right, now as far as going into your buildings, uh, again, you just drop down the sidewalk. Really, really simple. Um, some of them you want to run the sidewalk across the front and leave a drop down right here. Uh, just think of different ways. You can actually raise your building up and trim the outside and your half slabs and run the half slabs right into the building. And then you'll have another step going up, especially in your uh, skyscrapers and stuff like that. Just build it one block higher than you normally would build the floor up instead of building the floor at this level you'll build it one more block higher and that's where you'll start all your floor design and you can run your half slabs right up to the door and you'll be able to walk straight in with just one little half step going up and it will blend in just fine now the other building I have over here is my museum again for like gas stations and stuff like that uh, this is what I did on this one I stepped it back back here so it wasn't quite as obvious so around the outside, it looks just it looks normal, with like a flat sidewalk going around it, like a lot of people have. But to connect it in with the rest of my world, I, uh, I did a drop down back here. So you can kind of use your parking lots as buffer zones to make a transition between your uh, half slab sidewalk and a flat normal sidewalk going into your buildings. Uh, the McDonald's, I did step it down. So over here, I stepped down to the front. I've got. Uh, some planters out front for trees and, and such so I kind of use those to blend in the sidewalk and make the drop to the normal sidewalk again uh, some more ideas there uh, here I've just did a, a normal drop down to go in and I was heading over to the museum <laughs> oh in the parking lot lighting uh, I haven't finished it all yet on the uh, on the smaller ones here I try to keep some lower lamps uh, uh, around the bottom for a, a just a generalized walking lighting area just because the glowstone doesn't put off enough light from this high but again we're going to go over that one two pieces of stone one two three four five six seven pieces of cobblestone wall and then we put one stone piece on top and if you're going to go in a corner one out each way and then one two three and then drop your light down that will give you a 90 degree corner uh, for a straight one I thought I had a straight one here or a three piece maybe that was in the church parking lot no there it is I just added one off the other way just like that and that will cover the light source on that area uh, now these I didn't put any lighting like I do in the water system or around the main light because I, want, I wanted these to be just a little bit uh, not light intense as the main crosswalks and, and the lower lamp system so you want to play around with your lighting a little bit and and not have the same uh, lighting trend for all your different lights so like I said this area here will be brighter this area will be a, a little less bright and this one will be even less brighter so again just some ideas on some different lighting tips uh, mess around with your height again just to get some different uh, lighting intensities and there's my post office and this building here, all these buildings were built in a different world, so I'm, I'm throwing them into my main city world and, and trying to get them all to blend in so that uh, <laughs> I have to come up with some different, different ways to make the transitions into the buildings. So this one here, I just got some courthouse type, type steps going up and, and then surrounded it uh, again with some more half, stab, half slabs or steps and then a wall type uh, barrier on each side so this building sets a lot higher. So you could use something like that to blend into the sidewalk. 
or like the post office over here again I built the floor higher than the road so I made sure that I had steps going up and the transition would be really really easy from the sidewalk into the post office so that is that oh there's some uh, little mailboxes really easy cauldrons with a piece of block on top and some buttons the garbage cans are the same way I think I went over those already two yeah two of those uh, weighted pressure plate, plate and some buttons so that covers that uh, I've got some other generalized lighting again because this came out of a different world you can use blocks uh, just regular blocks with glowstone uh, half slab on top and some trap doors around it uh, again because of this texture pack texture pack makes uh, or breaks a lot of worlds um, so be sure if you are running PC with texture packs that um, pick something that you think looks really really good before you start designing uh, a huge world uh, otherwise you get halfway through it and be severely disappointed when you start trying to do other things so but this texture pack works good for what I want I can either use the open light source or I can use the trap doors around it and it looks good either way uh, a little trash can there let's see apartment complexes alright so for the apartment complexes I just stopped the sidewalk again I've got a really nice wide opening here so it looks very uh, realistic and natural uh, with a flat of course the floor is down here because of this building I didn't want to really raise it up and have steps going up into it because uh, most apartment buildings aren't built like that so I had to make the sidewalk uh, and adjust it to fit that style so I just dropped it down filled this in with some stone and which runs all the way through on the lower level and uh, and that's how I did that so all right, I think I have covered everything as far as what I've got done so far on my streets. And, uh, oh, handicap, handi handicap parking. Uh, this is all that I've come up with so far. This is about the best I can come up with is a 3x3 three three blue block with a white block in the middle. And then put your handicap parking sign in the back. Of course, they float off your posts, but that doesn't look too awful bad. And I yes, now I think we are done. Went over the bus, the bus stops, and again, paint markings went over all those. They will change. Just think of again how a, a vehicle would drive, and ones that you see in the real world it makes it a hell of a lot easier than guessing at it. And that is it, guys, for my basic road tutorial. As we get a little further up into the city, and I start adding on to these roads, and we start putting parking lots or uh, parking spaces on the side. We start doing off ramps, we start doing inclines and things of that nature, overpasses. I will probably make a second tutorial to this. And um, if not, just be sure to follow the Build It Better videos. And uh, I always try to go over everything in that. So hope this helped out, guys. Makes your roads a little bit better, adds a little more character to your worlds. And, uh, and I hope you keep building and having fun. That's all I've got. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.